आर्काइव्स ऑफ प्रसार भारती प्रेजेंट्स द टाइमलेस ट्रेजर ऑफ गोल्डन एरा Adur Gopala Krishnan has emerged as the foremost Indian filmmaker in the post Satyajit Ray generation. Uh, his film Ila Patayam was honored by the British Film Institute, the first Indian film to have been so honored since uh, Satyajit Ray's Apur Sansar. Um his films are part of the UNESCO 100 Years of Cinema collection. Uh, his very first film Swayamvaram won the Best Picture award, the Best Director award, the Best Cinematography award and the Best Actress award. Uh, Adur comes from the village of Adur. and uh, like uh, many of his colleagues uh, he's drawn his inspiration from kathakali uh, adur you you you're on record as saying that kathakali in in some ways embodies in an em- embryonic form uh, your vision of cinema well it's it's very difficult to analyze the influence in that way but um, kathakali has been part of my upbringing because uh, my family has been for generations associated with the kathakali as my basically as patrons and i grew up um, watching kathakali right from my mother's lap but when i started learning uh, about cinema uh, formally at the film institute when i start when i became aware of the grammar of cinema then i suddenly realized that kathakali the 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 performance of kathakali is also very akin to the exposition in cinema uh, for instance close up because kathakali characters actors perform before an oil lamp of 4 and 1/2 feet height and the oil lamp the amber light it is uh, supposed to light up their faces and uh, when they do a mudra they bring their hands forward and then it is shown in such a way that it it lo- almost looks like a close up of the hands and uh, the whole makeup um, is done in such a way that only the, the the expression is projected not exactly the 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 the, the figure as such uh, so it gets to the core of an expression kadagali that's what exactly cinema also does i think when you when you watch a film a film of real merit uh, the the impression that you get you know that's a kind of an experience you know you may you may forget about the the environment you know the 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 impact that is left on you is the most important thing and then also the use of color for instance uh, they are absolutely psychological in kathakali it may be very difficult to draw a parallel because kathakali is very stylized whereas uh, cinema is basically by its very nature uh, tending towards realism of course it uh, overcomes that and then um, uh, the methods used in uh, cinema um or especially in the new kind of uh, films that we are all making we try to overcome this um and common place character of what you do through camera what is the quality for you as as as, as a viewer say when you go in and, and watch a film that that gives it real merit you no know, merit because uh, essentially um it has to say something very original and it has to say in a way which is original uh because it is it is not necessarily presenting something what your audience is expecting because uh, that is what popular cinema does you know audience already knows what they are going to see and they they feel terribly irritated when when it is not in consonance with what they have come to see and in the kind of um, cinema i am talking about the 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 exercise is basically um like um, a creation you know of an artist where necessarily novelty is the base of it you know ba- the basic thing to it and uh, i do not mean that you have to to antagonize an audience or you know forget about an audience you need an audience yes well at the same time audience should should feel happy that they are discovering things on their own you know th- there should be challenges uh for the filmmaker there should be a challenge that the, he is trying to give something new for even for himself it should be challenging then it becomes a, a pleasure for the audience that they can discover new things in the work 
To what extent do you consciously seek to cultivate uh, originality or, or, or to do something differently for its own sake? No, nothing is being done for its own sake. In fact, um, it is boring that when you, when you start creating something, you know, if you, if you become suddenly aware that you've already done it or somebody else has already done it, then it must be a repetition of you know, what is already there. So it is quite boring to do that. So it is for one's own pleasure that you try to say things in newer ways and you try to uh, sort of uh, uh, even innovate in terms of even in terms of the, the technique that you use. So this is a part of, uh, this is an ongoing uh, kind of process. It doesn't stop with just one film and uh, it's not a question of a film being accepted and approbated and then you say, well, I have reached. For an artist, there is nothing like a point where you can reach and then trust um, on your laurels. You have to be constantly on your toes. You have to be constantly aware of um, um, being overtaken by your own um, uh, uh, zest for perfection. Now, this is very important. So I'm going to go back a little bit in time. Uh, you mentioned the Film Institute, but before you went to the Film Institute, uh, you were a graduate in political science uh, from a Gandhian institute in Madurai uh, with, a, with, with an influence of, of Gandhi, and you then had hoped to, uh, in fact, pursue a career in theatre, and you looked at the possibility of the National School of Drama and gave up in dismay because your Hindi was perhaps not very good. Even today. <laughs> <laughs> Would you say that you ended up at the Film Institute uh, by default? Yes, almost, because at that time I wanted to study um, drama formally, because, and I found that at that time the Institute was offering a course. The Institute had just started in 1961, and I happened to see this advertisement in a newspaper about the same year. And it said that they were offering a course in screenplay writing and uh, film direction. I very foolishly, very meekly, I thought screenplay writing should be very similar to playwriting. So because I was already um, writing plays, performing them, acting in them, uh, directing them, I thought this is the, the real opportunity for me. And then um, that's how I applied. I got of course you got in with a, with, a, with a merit scholarship and you were the, perhaps the first uh, major uh, FTII graduate from Kerala uh, to make, make, make the kind of impact that you did with your, with your very first film. You, you were talking about uh, innovation and I remember your film Kodiatam, uh, which uh, was a film without any, without any music at all. That's true. And it was a film that worked entirely with layers of sound. Mm -hmm. uh, was that again a conscious choice of, at innovation? No, no, I thought of, in fact, I thought of music in the film because m music has this um, problem, it, it starts underlining and tracking certain uh, things. It, it, music can be used, of course, very well, but in a film like uh, Kodiatam, where the hero is like a float Sam, you know, um, there is nothing in there that you can underline. But then the film is working towards uh, a point where he comes back to life and he, he thinks that the family, the relations, uh, all that really count, you know. You know, it, to that point of uh, awareness, the whole thing is working. And the film has a very episodic structure. In fact, if you look at it, it has even the structure of a festival in a temple in a village. In a village festival, you know, what happens is um, people go to see, watch uh, the, the fun of the festival. And then actually their being together there is the festival. And uh, outwardly, you don't really see any, any development. But then there is an internal development. So this is the idea around which I worked it. And uh, I could not see any place where I could really use the, use the composed music. So I have gone in for sound effects, even uh, sounds of the birds, of the everyday uh, sounds that you hear in life. But then again, the sounds, each type of sound used as a, it denotes a time, an emotion. All these things have been brought in through the use of the uh, sound effects. The, the film, there was almost a, a, a conscious moving away from, from literary convention in a sense. You weren't using sort of the, the, the traditional literary symbolic images, and your images are very sort of stark and precise. And in, in some ways, that has been the hallmark of much of your, uh, your, your cinema. Uh, 
it has it has a deep, quiet, controlled simplicity to it, and, and yet there's a profound control uh, in 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 the images that 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 emanate from it. Uh, what is the process of, of of creation for you? You know, you get a story, and then what do you do? Well, um, you know, it it, it started. In fact, Kodiyattam started um, from a character actually, whom I knew in my childhood. But when it is finally uh, written, um, you know, I, because I always write very detailed script, when it was finally written, I found that it had very little to do with the character I started with, and uh, it kept on uh, developing. With, re with the result. Um, I could give these uh, levels of uh, textures and things like that into weave all that in, into the film as I kept on working. But then also, um, I also wanted to give because of that particular character, uh, because of the very nature of the character, I wanted to give it this episodic structure. And also, I wanted the the viewers to feel that nobody has manipulated anything. You know, it, it should look like everything has been happening like this. You know, and, and you are just there. This is the kind of treatment I, I attempted in this. It, it strikes me that obviously you put in a lot of work on your films because you take a long time between films. Your first film was in 1972 and you've done six or seven films uh, since no, then. That, that so there's long a long gestation period and, 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 and I think that, that shows in your work there's an enormous sense of control and consideration in it which makes gives it its profundity. In fact, I, 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 even right now I am I'm thinking about an idea and then thinking of doing a film, um, writing a script. But I have been rejecting ideas like that because I, I mean, when it really strikes, then you feel very excited about it. And I, then I, I said, well, it is not time to take it up. Do you feel insecure between these periods? What if an idea doesn't strike? I, it, it is terrible, actually. Um, when you really want to make a film and then um, um, nothing really exciting starts you because excitement means an idea should uh, take you along uh, through the whole process of making the film. It should be is so um, exciting, enthralling, you know, for you at every moment of its making. And then in that process, what happens is if the idea itself is um, it has the potential, then you know, like an organic development, it keeps on growing. Uh, this is a very, very special kind of feeling that you get. I'm sure that sort of funding now with your eminence isn't, uh, isn't such a difficult problem for your work. But the early years post uh, the Film Institute were a struggle. And you, you, know, you, you were involved with Aravindan and, 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 and a group of very eminent filmmakers uh, with the setting up of uh, Chitralekha. Uh, what was that uh, experiment? You know, actually, at that time in 1965 when I passed out, that was the time when Nobody believed that there could be formal training in filmmaking. The only way of making a film was to apprentice under someone, some established film directors, and then go on uh, working under him, starting as a clapper boy and then slowly graduating to become an assistant, first assistant, second assistant, like that. And finally making a film when he gets the chance. So in the beginning, I, I did attempt uh, through my friends to get some finance to make a film. Uh, but then slowly, and uh, not slowly really, but then almost quickly I realized that for the kind of training and background I had, I would never find a producer in, from, the, in the, from the regular film industry. So we decided, myself and a few friends of mine, in fact, Aravindan was not involved in, in the project. Other friends, um, like uh, Bhaskar Nair and uh, a couple of other friends who studied with me in the institute, so we took, uh, <coughs> we, we, we formed this cooperative and then started right away. Although we formed the cooperative, we didn't have the money. The cooperative was, uh, it was a cooperative of poor people, so it was a poor cooperative. So we had to raise funds by making documentaries and uh, in fact that was a great period of learning for me in the sense uh, I learned not only um, directing films, I started um, doing camera work editing films, recording sounds, and like that. So I did practically about everything about filmmaking in that period. And uh, that, that disciplined, I think, my work. Because even while you are scripting, you knew that what ex how exactly to achieve that effect, you knew. Because no cameraman would ever tell me that this is not possible. Because I would know that it is possible, otherwise I wouldn't write. So 
this was a great advantage and then of course cooperative did a lot of things other than making uh, short films the first two feature films were produced by the cooperative and then we made about more than two dozen uh, short films not necessarily um, very important films but then they were commissioned jobs to keep this cooperative going we had to make that kind of films and um, unfortunately cooperative is not functioning today so why do you think the uh, wonderful movement like this decline what happened no it's an it's an organic uh, happening because anything that has a birth it has a period of growth then a decline and uh, end so i see it like that way and also cooperative did a lot in creating an awareness amongst the, uh, the kerala audiences because cooperative was behind the whole film society movement in kerala because uh, we could um, uh, uh, help societies being formed in, in various towns in, 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 the, in the state and then supply them with the films, literature, go around talking about films. So it is almost a missionary activity. And then um, about uh, around that time, the, the, the public sector studio also came into being. That was one of the reasons why the cooperative started declining. You've been the, uh, the 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 chairperson of the Film and Television Institute in Pune, an institute that of, of which you were a graduate. Um, what is your agenda uh, for the Film Institute? I must say that this has been one institution which has retained its uh, eminence right from the beginning to this date. And in this, although in the beginning the industry was very skeptical about the training being given there, today you can see that the whole film industry in the country is being per, uh, has been permeated by the institute graduates and you can also see the quality in the, in the cinematography in the sound recording in all these spheres especially what is what, what one what? area where we have not been really very successful is in the in the matter of uh, students in the direction course i think uh, direction is basically a, a very personal thing you know, you know you bring your own experience your own attitude to it, like it's like uh, being a writer. No institute can you know, train you as a writer, whether you have it or uh, you don't have it. That's all. So, when people blame that how many directors it has been able to produce, I don't take it as uh, very seriously because uh, no institute in the world can produce directors. It can help the directors find their way, find their own. Uh, expression. What, what new direction or, or, or content are you, are you giving the institute? The stress has been uh, on the institute students being exposed to all kinds of influences, not necessarily in the Western cinema or the European cinema, but then also our own masters like Ray, Khatak, Manarsen, Shambhanigal, you know, all these m m very important uh, Manikaul, Kumar Sahini. All these very important filmmakers, um, you know, they, they need, need to study. And in fact, um, in, in the present program of study, we have also given a lot of importance to uh, work, uh, workshops conducted by eminent filmmakers, uh, internationally known filmmakers. In fact, even the last year, we had uh, about six filmmakers from right from uh, various countries like Czechoslovakia, Hungary, all these. Um, very outstanding filmmakers have been coming, staying you just there. You mentioned a list of uh, a number of eminent Indian filmmakers. Who have been the filmmakers who have been a major influence in, in, in your work and life? Oh, no, if you talk about uh, Indian filmmaker, as the most important is, of course, Ruthi Katak, and uh, first should come the name of Satyajit Ray and then Ruthi Katak. I think they have been, uh, Ruthi Katak was also my teacher at the institute. But um, Influence means you, you admire their work, that, but then you don't want to replicate what they've already done because that's no, no way of uh, paying tribute to a, a guru. To what degree do you think that your work has been influencing uh, that of, of, of other filmmakers generically? I have no idea. <laughs> Actually, <laughs> I have no idea. To what extent do you think that uh, you know, your work has had to respond to, or has been influenced by changing external environment in terms of uh, audience and viewer responses and reactions. I think with the advent of a lot of people watching television, uh, the amount of attention span that, that people tend to have for, for you know, a, a quality of your film has, has, has these wonderful images are held 
uh, and, and, and until they sort of evoke emotions in the audiences. It's not just a fragmented images, image that, 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 that keeps sort of going by. Uh, so so what, to what extent are you governed by, influenced by, respond to uh, changing audience tastes, shall I put it? Well, if you, you cannot completely ignore the audience response. At the same time, you cannot also go by the audience response. In fact, in the beginning, uh, when I made my first film, second film, I used to go and uh, watch the reaction of the audiences. And uh, there are uh, areas in the film, you know, where you can see, visibly see and feel the audience responding, you know, seeing and reacting. And uh, when you see this, and then you when, when you find that they really, uh, you know, uh, take it, and you, if you are around, you know, then later on I realize this can be very bad on you, because way? then no, because then you will start trying to uh, placate uh, to their uh, kind of tastes and then attitudes, which can be very dangerous. In fact, you have to make them see your work on your own terms, not on their terms. <laughs> Not on their terms, so I am I am well aware of um, of, the, of of the change in the attitude of the audiences, because especially because of the fast-moving images of the um, certain channels and programs, and it can definitely condition and the the viewing um, character of the people. Yes, it can change, but then. Um, it is both ways, you know, you, you, you cannot ignore it, at the same time you cannot be entirely guided by that. For you, what is the moment of uh, creative uh, satisfaction when you've made a film? Uh, at what stage does it happen? Uh, when you see the answer print, when you uh, show it to your first audience, when you win the award as you do with, with, with sort of unending succession, uh, what is the moment of, of, of supreme gratification? When does it happen? It's not at just one point, you know, at, at different points in fact. Uh, it cannot be when you, when I see my first print, I am always unhappy, mm -hmm. always unhappy. When I, am, I see my rushes, I am very, very depressed. And then, of course, there are various reasons, because it may not be graded, it may not be what you had imagined in the sense, the same view, everything under a different lighting will look very different on the screen. It can be still be graded and developed, improved, you know that, but at the same time, uh, even watching too many takes, uh, it's a problem because uh, you, you are you know, constantly worried about which take you are going to choose. Although because I, by habit, uh, I go off for more than one take always. Even when I'm happy with the take, I go for a retake because I think my art is that of the retake. Because I always want to, uh, to rethink, uh, reconsider a proposition. So. Even when the final print is struck, uh, you are not entirely happy because, because I, I sit with my technician even for even for the grading, so I am involved in everything you know, uh, I, I do in cinema. So there is nothing comes as surprise. But then what sometimes surprises you is somebody condemning your work entirely. You know, like somebody says, so this man has been toiling for so many years and he doesn't even know how to make a film. Such comments come, you know, from it may be coming from uh, very strange minds, you know, uh, very uh, psychological, strange um, psychological uh, working of the mind. But at the same time, it, it can really hurt you. And um, sometimes somebody says that it's a great work. That also doesn't really uh, satisfy you because you know that that kind of comment doesn't really uh, assess your work. Whereas uh, when somebody watches your film, and he says, he, when he talks to you in a, in a way that shows that he has understood your work in its entirety, that really pleases you. That is a point, in fact. In fact, then, uh, you, then you also realize, after all, an artist wants to be understood, not necessarily praised or condemned. What is most important is that. This is to wish you many more films, many more years of filmmaking, and, 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 and many more accolades and laurels. And you already have won far more than we have been able to mention in this program. Thank you very much for the opportunity and privilege of talking to you. Thank, Thank you. you.